for Jesus. Oh, please, Lord, are clapping for Jesus, not for ourselves. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for your ministration. Now, in the course of our prayer, which was led by Pastor Frank Akuno, we also received a prophetic word So at this moment, I want you to prepare yourself. You are also going to receive another ministration, and would humbly call at this moment Elder Patrick Adonu, who is the Pensa International Coordinator, to come and minister unto us. Let's clap for the Lord as He comes. Hallelujah. I'll be here raising hands all of the days of my life. I'll be here bowing down all of the I'll be here lifting us lifting sing all of the days of my life I'll be a singer I 
are sacrificed to Jesus. Lord, I say, For the last time, if you are worship, lift up your voice. Lord, receive this living sacrifice. I am your word. Lord, I accept this living sacrifice. bringing our very selves to you as a sacrifice. We have not come, O oh Lord, coming to sing songs. Today, our song is this presentation of our bodies, our flesh, and our systems, our minds, and our heart to you as the sacrifice that we want to lay on the altar that you shall consume. O oh God, accept this living sacrifice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I salute our fathers and uh, we are very grateful for the opportunity given us to share the word of God with you um, and thank all our brothers and sisters working in Pensa, Pensa, Ghana for this opportunity. Amen. I've been tasked to share with you uh, a short discussion on the, on the theme, I will go. My role in God's army as today's soldier. Sorry, as today's youth, I will go. My role in God's army as today's youth. I will go. My role in God's army as today's youth. This is taken from, I mean, our overarching theme that we are dealing with, equipping the church as an army to possess the nations. And in the course of this discussion, there are two fundamental foundations that I want to bring your notice to. And so these are the foundations upon which the discussion is premised. And so it's very important, and I, ple I plead that you will pay attention. Now, there are two words that are very boisterous in themselves. They are very instructive in the entire theme for this year. And pe personally, I am very, I'm particularly happy about the theme. I don't know if it is because it has the word army. Now, so the two words that are moving in my view, that are moving this year's theme. One is the concept of an army. The concept of an army. And then two, this foundation is premising the word of God. The concept of an army. And two, the, the eternal purpose of God's agenda. So, so, it is the eternal purpose of God's agenda that nations shall be possessed. God's intent and purpose is that nations, all the nations of the world, will be possessed. So, that one, as, as one of the legs upon which this message is standing on and then the other leg is the concept of an army now when you study scripture you realize that please give me your attention you realize that the bible calls or trains the christian or actually packages the christian in many ways there are many many themes and and packages that god gives to the christian sometimes god calls the christian the apple of his eyes Deuteronomy, you may not have to write these ones down. I mean, you may not have to read it, but you may write it down. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 10. Deuteronomy 32, 10. God calls the Christian and he says that this is the apple of my eye. In other words, if you touch this person, you are touching a sensitive part of God. And so we, we know, we know that God calls us the apple of his eye. But that is not the only positioning that God has given to us as Christians. Sometimes you hear that God calls the Christian dome, that is the entirety of Christians, he calls us his bride. He calls us his wife. And, and if you read scripture, I mean, Zechariah 2, 8, 2 Corinthians 11, 2, Revelation 19, verse 17, Zechariah 2, 8, 2 Corinthians 11, 2, Revelation 19, 17. We, we, we hear that God is packaging the church. And God, and when I talk about the church, I'm talking about you and me. So God's intent Apart from he calling us his, the apple of his eye, follow me, he also calls us his bride. And in fact, if the Lord helps, 
our pencil brothers and sisters, and you marry, especially the brothers, you realize that a bride is a very important subject in the scripture. I told some brothers who say, hey, it's a powerful message. Dear fathers, about a year and more ago, I got a bride. Ah, you, you don't know, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's a powerful revelation. One day I was in the house and when I woke up, I saw that there is this beauty, daddy, there was this beautiful girl and I realized all this human being belongs to me. Hey! Somebody, I'm preaching the word of receive yours. You are seated by somebody you are praying for. You will not say amen. amen. <laughs> and so you see that when a man gets a bride, there is a particular joy that enters their heart. And there is a, there is a, it, it even helps your message and your preaching to be a good one. And God calls the church his bride. So he calls us the apple of his eye. He calls us the bride. And again, God calls the church a sweet fragrance unto him. And when you, when you pay attention to the, 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 the thematic names that God, I know that you like the issue of the bride. We'll touch it later. But when, when, you, when you see how God packages the Christian and his intent, you, you will see that God has good intent and purposes for you. This afternoon, may God's intent and purposes for your life be reflected to you in Jesus' name. So, one of, the, one of the good things that every human being enjoys is sweet fragrance. And for God, God doesn't use Giorgio Armani fragrance and, and Dose and Gabani. When God wants to smell good, he goes around the church and picks Pastor, Pastor Obin and smell, he, he sprays Pastor Obin over himself and he walks around and the entirety of the angels are smelling Pastor Obin and they say, ah, daddy, you smell good. God calls us. God calls us fragrance. Now, please follow me. We don't have so much. So, God again calls the Christian his children. And there, there, is a, there is a particular revelation with that. The Bible says that for them that, are, that, that, that accept him, to them he gave the power to become the children. For us, for children, we receive a power to become. And, and when you study the scripture again, you see that apart from fragrance, apart from apple of the eye, apart from a wife, Apart from children, God also packages the Christian and calls him sons. Sonship is different from ch children. Because children is received. John 1, 12, children to be a child, you receive a particular power. And that power makes you a child. But not every child becomes, I mean, not every child is a son. For sonship, we grow into it. And so when you study the scriptures, the Bible teaches us in the book of Galatians 3, 26 and 2 Corinthians 6, 18, Romans 8, 14, he teaches us to them that are led by the Spirit of God, they are no longer called children, they are called sons because there is a leading. And until a man is being led by the Spirit of God, he could be a child. But the portion of God's description of the Christian that I want to focus on shortly as, as a foundation is that God doesn't only call us wives, he doesn't only call us fragrances. He doesn't only call us apple of his eye. We are not only sons and daughters and children. God also packages the church and he calls the church his army. And so the Bible says that put on the full armor of Christ. We don't wear armor for weddings. Armors are not for weddings. Armors are for armies. Armors are for soldiers. I thought there are young men and young ladies in this place of Ghana who are soldiers enough who understand that armors are for soldiers. And there is a way soldiers behave. There is a, are there soldiers in this house this afternoon? I, uh, I, uh, I'm not sure about those from KNUSC, but are there soldiers in Legon? Maybe there are soldiers somewhere in PU, Pentecost University. Are there soldiers here? Are there soldiers in Pensa Ghana? So God doesn't only package us on the sweetness of his word, he also intends to build of us and in us soldiers. 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 Armies. Gallant soldiers. Men who rise and stand and pray. People who are tuned and trained to be soldiers. It is part of God's intent. And so the Bible talks about it. The Bible says that in the book of 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 to 4, he talks about we being soldiers. But the part of the scripture that I want to read is Joel 2, 11. Joel 2, 11. So God does not only package us or call us apple of his eye, 
and all that, he also intends to make of us soldiers. Soldiers. Because of time, maybe you can also write Joel 2, 11 down. So the first premise and the first foundation of this particular message is that God is building us to become oh church soldiers God is building us to become God intends to build us to become armies now on the other side the second leg and the second foundation for this for this message is God's eternal purpose for human please follow me please follow me now when God created man in the book of Genesis the Bible says that the chapter 1 verse 26 27 and 28 you read that the bible says that let us follow me please follow me let us create man in our own image and likeness follow me now when you when you study and you leave chapter chapter 1 26 and you go to 27 now in the 28 the bible says that god had created this man by dust and in chapter i mean chapter 1 28 the bible says that god spoke to the dust and god told the dust be fruitful and multiply. Remember, in that chapter 1, verse 28, God had not breathed into that dust yet, but God was speaking to that dust. Now, my interpretation and understanding is that everything that God creates, by nature of God being God, that thing takes a particular kind of life. So when God created birds, he did not breathe into them, but birds have life. When he created lions, he did not breathe into lions, but lions have life. When he created trees, he didn't breathe into trees, but they have a particular kind of life. So when God picked the dust and created that, that symbol of a man, I mean that, that miniature of, of a human being, that thing still had a particular kind of life. And that is the reason why God, in verse 28, will talk to that thing. And he says, be fruitful and multiply. Now when you move to verse, chapter, chapter 2, verse 7, now the Bible says that, now God breathed into this thing he has spoken to. And now God put his kind of life into this thing he has created. So the first life that was in that dust, I call that life the natural life. Why? Because it came from nature. God picked sand or dust, which is part of nature, and created this life, which is part of nature. So it is called the natural life. You see, if you take the Holy Spirit away and man enters nature man behaves like nature hmm. when you take man without the holy spirit he can be a professor without the holy spirit his the level he can get to is the natural life so he's a professor he has a wife but naturally no single animal stays with one girl no animal stays with one woman lions have many girls go and check wolves have many girls so the natural man, even though he might be a professor, he will see the young girl, even though he has a wife, and his child is the same as this girl, he's still chasing after them because it's the natural man. It's the natural man. The natural man follows. So God saw this natural man, and he wanted, I, he wanted a place to dwell himself. You see, the body, the flesh, is a temple. What is a temple? A temple is the dwelling place of deity. A temple is the place that spirit, please, I'm building a foundation, so follow me. A temple is the place that spirits dwell. So we have temples for gods. God, God, Elohim, wanted to build himself a temple. But as for him, he will not use a temple like this. He created a man so that he will live in that temple as a God living, deity living in that flesh. So when God breathed into man, he was not making a surplus or a, 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 a I mean, a, a subsection of, I mean, a, a smaller version of himself. God tabernacled in this temple. God dwelled in the temple he has made. God's eternal purpose for this flesh is that he will dwell in it. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is not a, it's not a response. It is God's actual perpetual and eternal intent. God's intent is that when there is Christ in this temple, both man and heaven has a hope of glory. Man says it and God says it. God's intent is that he will dwell in this temple. And when Christ dwells here, there is a hope that heaven is looking for. There is a hope that animals are looking for. There is a hope that bears are looking for. The Bible says creation earnestly awaits the manifestations of the children of God. Why? Because Christ in you, there is a hope. That hope is not only about a good exam, I mean, a good exam score. It's not only about a good marriage. It's not only about a good, a good life. Heaven 
also seeks for that hope. Because God knows that when he tabernacles in this temple, mighty things will happen. Now, the Bible says that, so the foundation is that God breathed himself, a portion of him, like he took, it's like water, a pool of water, and he fetched a bit of it and poured it into a container. That container is the temple called Patrick. But, you see, sin is not only a proof of rebellion, sin is also a proof of power. Right. Now, this mic can never tell me he will not produce the sound. Now, any day that this mic tells me I will not speak again, it means that the microphone has gotten a particular kind of power that is almost the same as mine. If the microphone, the microphone can speak to me and say that I'm going to play a song, it means that the microphone has gotten a particular kind of power and that if, if he gets the kind of power I have, then he can also do what he wants. The proof of sin for man to tell God that I will not worship you again tells that man has something. You see, it is very interesting that man can say, I don't like you, God. It tells of a power. That power is God. That portion of God that dwells in that man that has left man. In the spirit, death is not, not to be alive. Death means separation from God. Follow me, please. So when man sinned against God, what happened is that a portion of God had stepped out and rebelled against God. Because that, that spirit of God that made man human is that part that is sitting in the lesbian, is that part that is sitting in the Muslim, is that part. See, there is a portion of him that tells, I, I will not worship God. That portion is what God is forever chasing after. You see, when he studies scripture, it's so amazing that, that God will keep chasing after man, chasing after man. In the Old Testament, in the New Testament, God is continuously chasing after man so that he will bring man to himself. Why? Why couldn't he just destroy all the men who don't respect him? So he creates a new one. It is because it's a portion of God is, is missing in them. And so in, in witnessing and evangelism, what God is doing, you see, evangelism, witnessing, missions is everything above a church. It's everything above a religion. It is actually God who is looking for himself, using himself to bring himself to himself. So the person, that Muslim, that lesbian, LGBTIQ, whatever, it is God, the reason why God still chases after them is that he still has a breath that is in them, and that breath is for him. And so he, re, he relies on you to go and bring himself to himself because you are him. Now, these are the two foundations upon which we are sharing this word. One, God is building an army. I will build my church for my own glory. I will build my church for my own glory. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. I say, I will build my church. I will build my church for my own glory. I will build my church for my own. Help me. And the gates of hell shall not Prevail, I say, I will build my church. I will build my church for my own glory. I will build my church for my own glory. Oh, and then The church is marching on, the church is marching on, yeah, yeah. the church is marching on, and the gates of hell shall not be church is I study, I see a prophet of God. He may not be called a prophet all the time, but when I understand the writings he did, 
I call our father a patriarch, David, I call him a prophet. Now, and in the book of Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3, there is a deep prophecy that he shares. And that is my message. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3. My uncle's scripture is this one. The Bible says that. The Lord, so one day, David, I mean, I am, I am meditating on this and I see David. One day, he's seated and he's worshipping. And he's worshipping. And he's worshipping. As he always does. And as he's worshipping, the heavens open for him. And when the heavens open for David, the Bible says that Psalm 110 verse 1. He says, he saw in the heavens. And he says, the Lord, capital L, O R D. If you check your Bible, you see that that one, the first Lord, the, the spelling is all in capital. He said, The Lord said to my Lord. Now, the second Lord is small L O R D. So he sees a communication happening in heaven. David, see, now there is a point I learned from our father, the youth director. He says that there are nuggets you must pick even in the message. Now, when a person worships, heavens open. Oh, yeah. When a person worships, heavens open. Church, when a person worships, heaven opens. When a person worships, heavens open. When a person worships, heaven opens. And heaven has opened to David. And the Bible says that he's, give, he's writing the things he has seen in heaven. And he said, I saw that the Lord said to my Lord, my understanding, L, capital L-O-R-D, God, Papa God, follow me. Papa God is having a discussion with his son, Jesus Christ. And, and, and David has had a glimpse of it. So the Bible says that, and the Lord, Papa God, said to my Lord, follow me, said to my Lord, Jesus. And he says, sit at my right hand side. Sit down. Now, God is telling Jesus, my son, sweetheart, sit down. Sit down. Somebody say, sit down. Oh, church, say, sit down. God is telling Jesus, uh, because we are in a youth service, all due respect to fathers, now we say it, chill. So God is talking to Jesus, say, Jesus, chill, chill. Somebody say, chill, 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 chill. Shall I get boys for here? I get boys for here. I get brothers for here. Then they here, then they here. Then if you speak PG, how God go talk to him? He say, what? So God is talking to his son. He says, Jesus, chill, follow me. He says, sit down. At my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool the Lord shall send the, the rod of your strength out of Zion and the Lord shall say rule in the midst of your enemies I love the, the verse 3 the verse 3 just the first sentence it says your people shall be volunteers other verse it says your people shall be willing in the day of your power this is my uncle scripture so, David sees a communication going on between God and his son. And David is seeing God tell his son, in fact, if you study scripture, you realize that in Mark 16, 19, Jesus has been given a place to sit at the right-hand side of God. You can write that down. Mark 16, 19. Jesus has been given a place to sit at the right-hand side of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus has been given a place to sit at the right-hand side of God. Romans 8, 34. Jesus has been given a place to sit at the right-hand side of God. Ephesians 1, 20. Jesus has been given a place to sit. Ephesians 1, 20. Jesus has been given a place to sit. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Jesus has been given a place to sit. Colossians 3, 1. Jesus has been given a place to sit. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Also talks about Jesus seated. On the right hand side of God. So, but, so when you study scripture, actually after Jesus did all he did on earth, his place in destiny, his place in Zion is to sit at the right hand side of God. That is his place. But as I was studying the Bible one day, I realized in the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 55 to 56, and I saw that for some reason, Jesus stood up. I want us to read that one. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 56.
All right. I read Acts 7, 55. Now, let's start from maybe 54. It says, when they heard these things, they were cut to their heart. And they gnashed at him and at their teeth. He's talking about Stephen. Now, verse 55, it says, but he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing. Now, I've given you six scriptures that confirm the fact that Jesus' place in destiny is to sit on the right-hand side of God interceding for us. But one day, something happened in heaven. And one day, one man was being killed. He was being stoned. And whilst he was being stoned, interestingly, he saw heavens open. Follow me. And the Bible says that when he saw heavens open, he saw that Jesus was standing and receiving him. Now, why on earth will a man who has six scriptures confirming his place in destiny to be seated at the right-hand side of God, what would he be doing standing? Why has, has the destiny changed and why is he now standing? What had happened? Why is Jesus now standing? That is my message. You see, some, some theologians believe that Jesus was standing to give uh, John, I mean, Stephen, a standing ovation. I think that it, it, it is their interpretation, and I respect that. But I don't think when you have somebody you love, when you have your wife, your bride, being stoned to death, you will stand and give standing ovation. Say, oh, kill her, kill her. Beautiful killing. Stone her, hit her back of her hair. Hit this, kill her, kill her. No. There was something happening to him. And that is the message. Now, Jesus was standing as a perpetual effect in, in, in eternity or in Zion to depict what Jesus does whenever his bride, any of us, is touched. Now, in eternity he's seated, but when, when men rise against the church, Jesus doesn't sit. Jesus stands up. Whenever a lecturer rises against your, your academic work, Jesus doesn't sit anymore. John's testimony tells us that when the church is afflicted, Jesus stands up. When the church is buffeted in our time, in our day, when LGBTQ and all these things that are fighting the gospel, it rises up. Jesus cannot afford to sit down when his beloved church, the fragrance of himself, is being buffeted. He rises up. He rises up. Now, however, what we read earlier on tells us that, my uncle's scripture tells us that Whenever Jesus rises up, the father tells him, in the book of Psalm 110, verse 3, he says, my son, sit down. Whenever there is an attack, the, the nations of the world are veering off from Jesus, and the children of God, and people that God loves and he bought by his blood, are veering off, what happens is that out of the passion and the love that is dwelt in the heart of Jesus, he, let me tell you, Whenever anything wrong is going on in your life, Jesus rises up for you. He rises up. That is why he tells you, say, He feels your pain. He feels your tears. So Jesus rises up when the church is being buffeted. Jesus rises up when the devil is, is crumbling onto the world to take it away from him. Ah, he rises up. But when he rises up, some tells us that, God tells him, sit down. Sit down. Why? Jesus rises up whenever the church or his people is buffeted. But Psalm 110 verse 3 tells us that when he rises up, God tells him, sit down. Why? So we go back to the, the, the anchor scripture. Psalm 110 verse 3. The anchor, when Jesus stands up, his father tells him, sit down. Why? And I want to read. I'm reading the verse 3. It says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion and say, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Verse 3. It says, It says, It says, Sit down. Why? Verse 3. Sit down. Jesus, sit down. Sit down. I will send 
that the rod of thy strength, I will send it and I will make your enemies, I vow to you, I vow to you. I will make your enemies your footstool. So sit down. How? Verse 3. He says, there is a day called the day of your power. And on that day of your power, I am building an army. On that day of your power, I am building an army. He says, your people shall be willing in the day of your power. Now, the reason why God tells his son, whenever Christians and the, and, the, and the Christendom and the gospel is being buffeted, why he tells Jesus to sit down is that he has finished his work here on earth. But God tells Jesus, I am building an army. And in the day of your power, your people shall be willing. Jesus tells his, God tells his son, I have an idea. I have a strategy. I have a plan. I have a plan sorted out. After you left the earth, I had a strategy in place. The same power that worked in you, I'm placing that same power in some other young men and young ladies. They will meet at PCC. Some of them will go to KNUSC. They will meet and come and pray. Jesus, sit down, sit down, chill. Because in the day of your power, your people shall be willing. They'll be willing. They'll be willing. They'll be willing. So God tells his son, sit down. God tells Jesus, don't, don't, don't. I'm not be a I have a strategy. Somebody, God has a strategy. LGBTQ, whatever, God has a strategy. Academic situations, God has a strategy. Life toughness, God has a strategy. God's strategy is that he tells his son, sit down. In the day of your power, there are people in this place, they shall be willing. In the day of your power, I am raising up a church. I'm raising up a people. So when the Christians come together and they sing songs, Asafu Yehovah Sore, Nama Wabembu Chereasi, Breviasi Tufunu Asi, Asafu Yehovah Sore, Breviasi Tufunu Asi, Asafu finishing so we pray went to Sierra Leone not too long ago I thought that Sierra Leone is one of us I went there 83 percent of them are Muslims and when you see people who don't know Jesus with all humility if I could have uh, Pastor Ofoku Mensah and then maybe uh, my, fa my father Pastor Bing to come to help me do administration now now when you go and I saw 83 percent of them Muslims and they don't know Jesus what happens is that as the church prays my brother you can come at the church prays this is the church of God this is the, the people of God, all right, the church of God. And, and being buffeted, Pastor, you, you and Pastor can hold him and drag him. And, and this Christian is rising up. He's trying to, to force his way out, force his way out. Oh, push it, brother, push it, push it some more. This is what many of our prayers does. In the prayer, we are pushing our place out of, out of, out of oppressions and out of systems that want to crush Christianity. Push it, push it. And there are sister, pastor is not a system against Christianity. Our two pastors cannot be. But in this case, we are just using them as an example. And they are holding the church bound and they are holding Christians so that it looks as if Christianity is a disadvantage. In our time today, it looks as if if you're a crazy guy for Christ, some way, somehow, it doesn't work. But it's a lie. As the Christian pushes, as the Christian pushes, and he's pushing, and he's pushing, Jesus... Even though he will be seated, he's pushing. Jesus rises up and the father tells him, sit down, sit down. Because I've prepared Pensa. And in the day of your power, they shall arise and they shall volunteer. Push it, push it. And, and it's happening. And, and every day, Jesus is doing the same thing. Keep on doing it. And Jesus rises. God tells him, sit down. There are Pensa in USC. There is Pensa Legon. In the day of your power, they shall be willing. And, and, and God has a strategy. God's promise to his son is Pensa. God is telling Jesus, chill, because I have people on earth. And the same power I put in you, called the Holy Ghost, I have also put it in them. Jesus, chill. Everything you did, they can do. Every sickness you heal, they can heal. Why? Because in the day of your power, your people shall be willing. Now, the dilemma, 
as I finish is this. The Bible says that in the day of your power, your people shall be willing. Interestingly, when we read the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says that, and when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. He's talking about that same power, which is in the day of his power, our day. But he said that when the power comes, ye shall be witnesses. You see, the power you receive shall make you, you, you may not know how, but as soon as that power touches you, you receive something that makes you a witness. The power that the Christian receives is not only a power to pray. Ah. How did we change the theology so much? So much so that the Holy Ghost power has been limited to praying in tongues. And interestingly, as for us alone and in our generation, we alone, we have a particular Holy Ghost that does not want to win souls. What kind of Holy Ghost do we have? How? How? Everyone that had this power that had been promised to the Son, when they had the power, they went out, went to, went to preach. One thing was visible amongst all of them. They loved to preach. They are so crazy about souls. We have a particular kind of Holy Ghost that makes men not want to preach. They don't want to share the gospel. They don't want to preach the gospel. What they want to do is to receive power to heal. Hey, what kind of Holy Ghost do we have? How, how, how is our Holy Ghost? It's a, it's a very interesting Holy Ghost. Our generation's Holy Ghost. How we've made it. And so you have somebody. We have been running, possessing the nation for almost four years. He has never spoken a word of God to anybody before. How? Where we are here to fall, no one sing. Which holy God do we have? In the day of your power, the power is the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that when the Holy Ghost comes, He shall give you power. He didn't say it is power. It is so clear in scripture. It says, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. The power causes a Christian to do one thing. Number, number one, the first thing a Christian does is that the power changes him to become a witness. You know who a witness is? A witness is a person who was there when an issue was happening so that he gives his testimony about what happened there. Now, how can, a, how can we be Christians who absolutely have no idea about what Jesus has done about our salvation? Hence, we don't have that passion and burden to go out there and go and preach. What Holy Ghost have you received? And if your Holy Ghost will only make you pray in tongues, if your Holy Ghost will only make you fall down, if your Holy Ghost will only make you, only make you do any other thing but not want to preach the gospel, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a theologian. But for me, what I read, he said, and when the power comes, you shall be witnesses. So if your power does not cause you to witness, I, I don't know. But in the day of his power, he will raise an army. Jesus today is raising some soldiers in this building. His intent and purpose. Look, listen. Now, this is not a motivational speaking. I'm telling you, in this day and time, Jesus is building an army. An army of young men and young ladies from all the nations of the world. People who are putting everything down and saying that, God, your issues first, your principles first, your kingdom first, your word first, souls first, everything about you first. Every other thing can be, uh, uh, every other thing can be something else. But it is you first. And as men, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see that all things follow them. All things work together for their good. All things follow them. And all things work together. Why? Because they put in place. In the day of your power, the people shall be willing. Are you willing? In the day of his power, the son has been promised. Sit down. I have a people. No, not you. This LGBT thing, Jesus, you don't have to come again. I have Jesus in this place. This, this, this issue of Islam Islamatization, you don't have to come to the earth again. I have pencil people I'm building. Ah, and I'm taking them to holistic empowerment conference. I am going to cook them so that when they step out of this place, one thing shall be different about them. That thing is that they go out spreading the love of Jesus to all the nations of the world. This is a proof that the power has come. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I have a plan. Sit down. And God's plan that he has given his son is you. God's plan that he tells his son, relax, is because you are there. And every day, he shouts, like in the day of Isaiah, Who would I send? And who will go? Who can I send? And who will go? 
Pensa International need men to go to Burkina Faso to go and establish pensions. Who would I send? And who will go? We need men and women who will use their phones and their laptops to win souls for Christ. A church has been opened in Mexico. Another one has been opened in Cuba. Just using phones and iPhones and, and, and social media. Who will I send? And who will go? Why have you come for empowerment? Is it so that you can go and pray in tongues again? How can our power, which is the Holy Ghost, not lead us to sin? Not lead us to win souls. Who will I send? And who will go? But in this service, Jesus is calling out soldiers. In this meeting, he's calling out young men. He's calling out young ladies, young men and young ladies who will put their lives on the altar and want the agenda of Jesus first. This possessing the nation's agenda is possible and it will be done. And I'm here to call these soldiers, people who are not moved by emotions, who are not moved because I'm preaching and sweating, so I'll go. No, people who are understanding that there is a call on your life, there is a demand. And there is a promise that father has given the son. He says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down until I make your enemies that fool say, how would I do it? In the day of your power, when the Holy Ghost comes, there are people who shall be willing. They shall volunteer. They will tell the pastors, take me to, to, to Rwanda. Take me to Bubuashi. Take me. Be, give me a megaphone. I will preach. Uh, don't meet him. Call me. I will go. Do you want people to sweep? I will come. I will do it. Oh, do you, you want ushers? I will do it. You want prayers? I will do it. What do you want me to do? I will do it. There are men like that in this place. And if you're a man like that who understands this calling of God in this time, in this army, you want to be on your feet and surrender right now. Master, I am here. Use me now. Use me now. I will not lift up a song. Lift up a voice in prayer. Master, I am here and I want to surrender to, to this army. I am ready. 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 Lift it up. 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 In the day of his power, his People shall volunteer in the day of his power. His people shall be willing in the day of his power. Men will, will want to go out there and preach the gospel in the day of his power. Men will go out there and say the gospel in the day of his power. And go out there and preach Jesus. I need a kiss. I need powder. The day of the Lord. The king of the Lord. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift it up, be enlisted in this army. In the day of his power, his people shall be willing. Are you willing? 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 Gimana Tule, Rana Masata, Emani Moki, Vida, Ashimene, Emene. In the day of his power, his people shall be willing. In the day of his power, his people shall be willing. Because of time, we are lifting up our last prayer. I mean, I wish I could share all the things in my heart with you. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. We don't get so comfortable with the, with the mass of our church. Let's be careful. Let's be careful we don't get so comfortable with the beauty of our campus ministry. Let's be careful. We are not so content with being a president and being a vice president. Let's be careful. Let's be careful that, that what is happening around us does not cut us off from the realities out there. For Jesus is raising an army. Now, before we do our last prayer, there are some of us here who are receiving this Holy Ghost and they are making a promise to themselves and God. This year, 2022, oh God. I will win X number of souls. Oh it is my passion. No, 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 no. Look, some of us, we have told ourselves, I will save X amount of money. Uh -huh. I will do this, I will do this. And interestingly, if we do a bio data here, you'll be so amazed how many of us have set targets for oh souls. No. Be amazed. A, what kind of Holy Ghost have we received? What kind? That does not cause us to want to win souls. What kind of Holy Ghost? 
or we are changing because we are entering the army of Jesus. Because it is the day of his passing and we are volunteering. Come now, before we pray, before we pray, you are not just praying, you are not just praying, you are telling yourself, by the time this year goes to an end, this number of souls, even if I have to spend all my money to win this number of souls, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. And that is what I want you to pray about. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, hundred. I want to win this number of souls. The master has a plan. And he has told his son that you are there. You are there. And so that is the prayer we are praying. And after that, some of you are saying that I will join the Pensa International Missions team to go to nations, to go and volunteer. I will, I will save my own money and pay my own plane ticket. Take me to Rwanda. Take me to, to Burundi. Take me to Afghanistan. Let me go and share the gospel. You're also like that. And now this is the prayer we are praying to God. Oh God, let this Holy Ghost in me cause me to want to win souls. And I want to win X, Y, Z amount of souls for Christ. For in the day of his power, his people shall be willing. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Build an army with your Jesus. The food of the town of Landica. The Gelman Rose of the year of the the Lord is building an army looking for himself to bring himself to himself. The Lord is building an army looking for himself to bring himself to himself. How many souls are you bringing to him? How many of these ones are you committing to Jesus? Lift it up, 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 lift it up. Matola, Rakimani, Azopia, Ayesa Pus, Sepaya, Alemanatola, Ayataka, Remanatine, Amadabadaba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm a bravo man, I'm on two. I mean, I want to say, anyone you know me, I mean, you know me. children of God say amen. Christ in you. Oh, hallelujah. I want
want us to stretch our hand on Elder Patrick Adonu and say, may the Lord bless you and fill you up. Amen. So that when given another opportunity, the Lord will use him to make greater impact in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take this few announcements. Elder Thomas Kwanza, Elder Thomas, please come around. We'll be coming for the afternoon session at 2.30. That is when we are starting. So we are starting this afternoon session at 2.30. So at least by 2.20, we are expecting that we should be here so that we'll settle down quickly and be able to carry on from the afternoon session. In the meantime, we also want to announce that we have pencil clothes and uh, youth ministry clothes available uh, outside. If you want to purchase some, some are available. The devotional guide, we have few copies too available and some other books and paraphernalia. So when we close um, this morning session, you can quickly uh, make yourself, get yourself acquainted with the items and then if you want to buy some, you do. Christ in you. Oh, Christ in you. All right. Let's um, kindly observe the following announcements also. Um, registration continues um, after close of service. All those who haven't registered yet can, uh, should make it a point to register at the Eunice Addison block um, if they have not already done so. Now, tomorrow we are going to have Shaka night. Amen. Hallelujah. But then there's a special dress code. 